What's going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of G4 Outdoors. Today I'm going to be showing you my superpower. No, just kidding. It's too hot out here for superpowers. What we got here is the brand new Toro Super Recycler 21 inch. It's got a uh, seven and a quarter horsepower motor on it made by Briggs & Stratton. Toro sent me out the really cool one though. It's the black one. Let's get to unboxing. All right, when unboxing this, do not use hammers. Or circles with triangles in them. This thing is a little bit heavy, so that is why I'm unboxing it on its side. You do need to care be careful when you're opening this because it does actually weigh a little bit. So, first thing in the box is going to be, I promise, it really is. So let's just take it all out. Get rid of some cardboard. Get this mower out of here. Alright, so there's, there's the back. I'm working on it, guys. Okay, so currently, one of the features on it, it is in its storage mode. So let's quickly go over the bag real quick for the bagging system. To put this together, it's super simple. You take these uh, tabs right here and you just clip them over the side of the frame. Nothing too complicated about it. Even though I make it look complicated, but there's your bag. Your bag's all put together. Easy as that. And we'll come back to this when I'm ready to put it on the mower. So here on the mower, let's start on the bottom. Something I know a little bit, something about. Uh, if you look down here on the bottom, it does have a gear drive because this is in the personal pace family of mowers. Uh, the personal pace, I'll talk about that here shortly as well. Uh, the blades on here, uh, these are just standard blades, a little bit of high lift. Uh, if you'll notice all the red parts under here, uh, there's a red piece here, here, here. What these are designed to do is knock that grass around so that it gets mulched a little bit more. These one, these red tabs right here are made for a little bit more lift. And it also uh, bounces all that grass around on the inside of here to, to really get that, all that grass mulched up. Uh, a very nice aluminum casted frame. And also on the wheels, uh, something I liked about the, uh, I have a battery powered Toro uh, lawnmower. They have rubber wheels on them and that's a lot better than any of the plastic wheels that you get on any of your mowers. Uh, if you've had plastic wheels before, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. In a, in a matter of a year, you rub a hole in those plastic tires and then you're, you're bouncing around. That the rubber wheels, I think, will last a lot longer. All right, so as it is right now, this is in storage mode. And with your gas and your oil in here, you can still put it up like this. Your gas and oil is not gonna drain out. Super handy feature. As you can see, this is only a body width wide, so you can pretty much put it anywhere in your garage that there's that much room. Uh, it is a good feature, not just a uh, selling point. So, to put this down, it does come with oil. Uh, something that I'll have to talk about here shortly is on the box it says no oil change required. I don't know how that's possible, but we will find out here shortly. We do have our grass chute and sticky stuff. So like I say, it is in storage mode right now. You have these blue tabs on each side. Undo those tabs. You can pull this up into a multitude of selections there so that it's ready to mow. When you get this home, that's all you got to do is just adjust your 
handle angles and you're ready to mow. So let's dig in, see how we need to set this up and get it ready. So as far as adjusting height on this, right now this thing is sitting so low. Uh, I just got down here and started glancing at it. It is set uber low, an uh, inch and a half. And I believe it goes all the way up to four inches. This is super easy to adjust. Well, it's just like any other mower really. Lift up on your mower and adjust that height. Now it goes all the way up to four inches. So you got an inch and a half all the way up to four inch capability on this. And same on the rear, four inches. You, there's a lot of adjustment in there. So uh, let me get all these wheels adjusted and then we will move up a little bit higher. And go. So I'm not gonna go into deep detail, but this does accept a garden hose so you can put that on there, run this mower in it, cleans the bottom of your deck out. I'm not a fan of those. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just I would rather turn these upside down and brush all that grass that stuck to the top of the mower. I'd rather scrape all that out. So in this current stage, it is made or designed to mulch grass with this gate on here. If you want to side discharge, this does have a safety lock on it. Just give that a quarter of a turn counterclockwise. Open the gate. Now this grass flap or grass chute does not connect to the deck. It doesn't lock in on the deck. It actually locks in by this gate right here. So you can just put it on here and let the lid fall down. And now you have a secure grass flap on here. All right, back here on the back of the mower, again, right now it's designed for mulching or side discharge. However, you have your side plate set up over there. If you want to use the bagger, just lift this panel up. You have to turn this lever here to unlock this, pull out this guard, and now this will allow all of the grass to come out the back. Now the grass bag is very easy to put on. You just slide it up in here into place and it's set. You're ready to go. You're ready to start bagging. Uh, the bagger is super light and set up just like, well, not just like this because you're going to be shooting out the side. So now set up just like that, you're ready to bag grass. So back here on the drive motors, we will have grease zerks. Uh, check your owner's manual on how often you do need to grease those. Also back here, there is a set of wheels. And when this is in the self storage mode, these wheels will help it roll around while it's all folded up. All right, so if it comes out of the box, more than likely there's no oil in here. So we're gonna add oil to it. And it says when you add oil, of course, if you've checked oil, it does have a hash mark right here. Just fill it up to the top of that line. Uh, it's showing a little bit of oil in here, so I don't know if there's actually enough oil in here or not. So I'm going to take the included oil, and I'm going to start adding a little bit in here just to uh, top it off or see if there's any in here. And one thing in the instruction manual, it does not say how much oil this takes. So this is going to be trial and error on my part. So yeah, I guess uh, 18 ounces gets it full and it's actually just a little bit over full. So I'm hoping once that gets into the gears, it'll drop down just a bit. You do not want to overfill your oil. That could cause some problems, but where I'm at, it's in a, it's in a safe zone. It's just a little full. Well, now you can say we finally found it in here because it's kind of hard because when you're looking through where they're doing oil, it says see specification section. And this is the specification section. So I'll do this. So looking into the uh, owner's manual a little deeper, we did find it, it is 15 ounces to fill this up. So I have 13 ounces or 18 ounces in here, three ounces over. I'm probably just gonna leave that alone up there. Uh, like I say, it's just a little bit over, but not too much over. Now on the gasoline on this, uh, it does say that you need to use anywhere between E0, which means zero ethanol, or up to E10, which is 10%. It, it says specifically, do not use E15 up to E85. So the less ethanol, the better. So over here on the front, right in front of your gas fill is your air filter. That's easy to take care of. Take that off, take a gander at it whenever it's time to take a gander at it or whenever you just feel like gandering and snap that right back on. That's a pretty easy item to take care of there. Are you 
poking fun at me. All right, so I walked all the way over to the neighbors to borrow some gas because that's the property I'm gonna be cutting. And we're just gonna fill this up with some premium fuel. I always prefer premium for my lawn equipment. It doesn't take much. And so I think that it's just better to go premium. I don't know, here we go. That's actually a big gas tank. That's, that's taking quite a bit of fuel. Um, it's two and a half, I don't know. It, it felt bigger than that, probably a half gallon. That's a lot of fuel for a push mower. Okay, so it says it on the box that Toro has a guaranteed start. Whether that means it's within 1,000 starts or the first starts, I don't know. Uh, let me make sure I don't need to prime this or anything. Okay, I do not see a primer ball. Uh, you watch me put gas in there, it's completely dry. So here we go. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> they said it's guaranteed to start. That surprised the shit out of me. So that first poll, I, I don't know how in the world that did that. Uh, hopefully that does it every time. Uh, anybody that's ever had a Toro mower, you probably know that they stand behind that stuff. I know that I have a snowblower standing right behind the camera I've had for five years. Starts first pull every winter. So uh, I don't know how they do that crap, but they do it. So let's get this outside. And I want to demonstrate the personal pace on this. Wrap this video up. Okay, so the personal pace, if you have not used this yet, this is one of the best. That's not an opinion. This is one of the best systems for pushing your lawn with a self-propelled mower. There are some mowers that have thumb controls. Some of them have a twist throttle. Some of them have a knob over here. But with the personal pace, this thing literally goes at the pace that you go at. And that's why it's called personal pace. You can lollygag around, go super slow, or you can almost get up to a jog with one of these. So I'm gonna fire this up. Volume's gonna be gone. Uh, so just watch my hands as I'm doing this and watch how cool this is. Again, we'll start with the uh, guaranteed start, see if that happens. We're fairly fast. And you know what? I, I might zip tie this just to show you guys one more time. Not recommended. Okay, we are in a secure location. It is right now not recommended to do what I am doing. Do not do this at home. I am only doing this for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna zip tie the safety to where it can start and run. And now I want to show you exactly how easy this is. And uh, let, me, let me describe it for you real quick. So, uh, that way you can hear it before the mower's running and you can't. This bar moving down is intended to get away from you. And that's what it does. So the further down it goes, the faster it's going to go. And I can, I can literally run this mower with one finger. Uh, like I say, this bar, its intended goal is to get away from you. And that's how fast the mower is going to run. Like I say, please don't try this at home with the zip tie. That's just dangerous. You're looking for problems. Your blades are going to be engaged all the time. They won't shut off. If anything happens, do not do this. Like I say, it's just trying to get away from you. Let me push on it a little bit harder. So again, safety purposes, do not do that. It's uh, very dangerous. 
So on this model of the mower, it does come in the flat black with the aluminum deck on it. Super, super cool. Uh, they do have these in red, but uh, I think that the black just looks totally killer. Uh, it's a cool color. I don't know if you're paying extra for that black or not, but it is a slick looking mower. The flex handles on it, I'm really digging that. So far, uh, taking a lot of that vibration out of your hands is gonna be a huge difference. Uh, it's got a fairly large fuel tank. I was expecting for that to fill up a little bit quicker than what it did. Maintenance on this thing, you have two grease circs on it, uh, an air filter and spark plug. You'll need to change those out on your regular intervals. The oil in here, no oil change required. Again, I, uh, it's something that I don't know how they came about doing no oil changes, but it says it says it in the instruction manual that zero oil changes are required. So all in all, this mower, just the unboxing and initial review, I do not see a single problem with this as of yet. Uh, stick around because I will be doing an in-depth mowing review on this video, a uh, video coming out very shortly. Guys, if you haven't yet, check out the playlist for the Toro. I have a lot, I have a Toro mower. I have to Toro yard tools like a hedge trimmer, blower, trimmer. Uh, later in the year, I'll be getting a chainsaw and a snow blower, battery powered. So please go check all those out. Uh, fascinating equipment. I'm really impressed with everything that Toro's been doing. Of course, Toro is sponsoring these videos. I'm not holding back on any of my opinions and thoughts on these. Uh, they've, they've treated me good. Their products are good. Their service is excellent. Uh, you take these things, I haven't had to take these things in, but if you take these to a Toro shop, Toro will take care of you. So, you know, I'm, I'm highly satisfied with the Toro products so far. So anyways, guys, if you like this mower, stick around for some actual mowing footage. Otherwise, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. I will see you in the next one. I'm out. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday. Thursday. I just dream of fishing while I'm going through my work day. I listen to my boss, though he's driving me berserk. Eh? Damn it, I can't take much more because my brain is really hurting. And now the bank is always calling and I don't know what to do. And I haven't bought a crankbait since like 1992. But the bass are out there schooling and they're ready to attack. And I got all my favorite lures and they're loaded in my pack. Hey. All that